subscribe to simplified biology channel and press the bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded hello friends welcome to simplified biology today's topic is history of photosynthesis history of photosynthesis now before going to the history what is photosynthesis photosynthesis can be defined as a process by which chlorophyll containing cells synthesize carbohydrate by the help of solar energy from carbon dioxide and water and the byproduct is oxygen chlorophyll containing cells means the green plants or the green leaves which have chlorophyll they utilize solar energy or they trap the solar energy carbon dioxide is taken from the atmosphere by the process of diffusion through the stomata water is taken from the soil and reaches the leaf through the xylem the sugar that is formed is translocated to the different parts of the plant through the phloem and oxygen that is the by product is released back into the atmosphere by the process of diffusion now come to the history of photosynthesis aristotle said that the plants get their food only from soil priestley joseph priestley in the year 1770 showed the role of air in the growth of plants the green plants he performed the bell jar experiment he took a bell jar and placed a mouse and a burning candle in it he saw that after a certain period of time the candle extinguished and the mouse died due to suffocation this was because they were damaging the air that they were breathing in he then placed a mint plant in the bell jar along with the burning candle and the mouse he found that both the candle continued burning and the mouse was stayed alive inside the bell jar this from this he concluded that plants release substances into the air that purify the air later in the year 1774 he discovered oxygen engine house showed that light is essential for photosynthesis he performed an experiment by taking an aquatic plant he showed that the aquatic plant produced bubbles in the presence of sunlight but in the absence of sunlight or in the dark no bubbles were formed means in the presence of light photosynthesis occurred while in the absence of light or in the dark there was no photosynthesis he identified these bubbles as oxygen next von helmont showed that water is essential for 
photosynthesis. He took a willow tree. He weighed the willow tree and the soil before planting. So before planting the willow tree, he weighed the tree and the soil. After five years, he measured the weight of the willow tree and the soil. He found that the mass of the tree increased by 74.4 kg while the mass of the soil decreased by 60 grams. He concluded that that most of the increase in the weight of the plant was due to the water that was regularly given to the plant. The Saucer said that both carbon dioxide and water are required for photosynthesis. He said that increase in the mass of plant is not only due to water but also carbon dioxide. Next, Mole's experiment showing that carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis. A jar is taken in which is placed potassium hydroxide so that it absorbs all the carbon dioxide present in the air of the jar. A leaf is half inserted inside the jar and the other half is left out. The plant is left this way for a certain period of time and after a certain period of time when the leaf was checked for starch by the iodine test it was seen that the part present within the jar did not turn blue or it was yellow in the iodine test while the part present outer to the jar turned blue in the presence of iodine means showing that the presence of starch in the part outside the jar and absence of starch in the part inside the jar showing that carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis. Julius von Sachs showed that glucose is formed during photosynthesis and this glucose is stored as starch. He said that a green substance that is chlorophyll located in special bodies that is the chloroplast within the plant cells carry out photosynthesis and during photosynthesis sugar or glucose is formed. Next is Engelman. Engelman took a prism to split light. He directed this light to a water droplet that had cladophora, a filamentous green algae and aerobic bacteria. It had a single strand of cladophora and many aerobic bacteria. Now since aerobic bacteria required oxygen so we can see that the aerobic bacteria got clustered at certain regions of the light. Certain regions of the light where there was more oxygen in the region where they can grow. And we can see that the bacteria were concentrated in the 
red region and in the violet blue region. So showing that in the red region and in the violet blue region more photosynthesis occurred. Engelmann gave the action spectrum which tells us the rate of photosynthesis at each wavelength. Van Neel worked on purple and green sulfur bacteria and showed that photosynthesis is a light dependent re reaction and the oxygen released during photosynthesis comes from water. The equation he gave was carbon dioxide and water in the presence of light form CH2O, water and oxygen. Next was Robert Hill who proved that oxygen released during photosynthesis comes from water. He showed that an isolated chloroplast evolves oxygen when illuminated in the presence of a suitable hydrogen acceptor and in the absence of carbon dioxide. So in the presence of a hydrogen acceptor like ferrocenide, he showed that the chloroplast releases oxygen. Now these hydrogen acceptors are referred as Hill's oxidants. And Hill's oxidant in photosynthesis is NADP. So Hill showed that water in the presence of a hydrogen acceptor released oxygen. Rubin and Kamen used a heavy isotope of oxygen to show that oxygen liberated during photosynthesis come from water. And for this they used the green algae chlorella. On one side they provided the green algae chlorella with carbon dioxide having the heavy isotope of oxygen and on the other side they provided water having the heavy isotope of oxygen. Now the oxygen bubbles that were released when they were checked, the heavy isotope of oxygen was found in case of the chlorella cells that were provided with water having the high, heavy isotope of oxygen. Next, Blackman. Blackman gave the law of limiting factors which states that a reaction that is affected by two or more factors is as fast as the slowest factor permits. Or the factor that is present to its minimum decides the rate of any reaction. Arnon isolated chloroplast and he showed that isolated chloroplast was capable of forming ATP and NADPH in the presence of light and in the absence of, of carbon dioxide. An isolated chloroplast can form ATP and NADPH in the presence of light and absence of carbon dioxide. He discovered photophosphorylation. And next, Emerson. Emerson and his co-workers carried out the flashing light experiment and proved the existence of the light and the dark phases in photosynthesis. He also gave the red drop and Emerson's enhancement effect. That's all for today. Please do like, subscri subscribe and comment and also visit our website by clicking on the link given below. Thank you. Thank you for watching.